What's up, people? Welcome back, and how are you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you for asking. Today's topic is something I don't see very often, but I feel is essential to understand as a cinematographer, and that topic is how to shoot faces. And what I mean by that is, we're gonna be just running through a bunch of different focal lengths today to show you what a human face does and how it reacts to different focal lengths. So we're gonna be shooting at an 11 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 35, 40, 50, and 70 millimeter lens. And the reason I chose those is because those are what I have at my disposal. Um, of course, there are a bunch of lenses in between. There are lenses way past 70, um, but these are what I have. And also keep in mind that we are shooting on a Super 35 sensor. These lenses would not look the same if you were shooting on a micro four thirds or full frame sensor. So keep that in mind as well. And I know a lot of you may have an understanding of what each lens and what focal length does to a human face. But for a lot of you, you may not truly understand the characteristics of what it does. And a lot of times, myself included, we're out there shooting things and just kind of changing focal lengths for the sake of changing and seeing what looks good. But as you get more involved in cinematography, it's very important to understand the characteristics of each focal length and what it does to a face, what it does to the location, what it does to the set, and everything in between, because those choices are gonna be vital to the story that you're telling. I also wanna note that there is no right and wrong choice here. It all has to do with the project and the story that you're telling. A lot of the times, especially in commercial filmmaking, you may be able to get away with a bit more of a stylized approach, but in narrative filmmaking, that might not be the case depending on the story. So to be able to show you guys a couple examples of what focal lengths do to a human face, I shot a few examples in my apartment with my fiance, and this isn't going to be a long video, and this is a bit more of a technical instructional video, so it's a bit different than what I normally do, but hopefully you guys can gain some value and some knowledge from it. And for a lot of you that actually, you know, already understand this, just hit that like button and be like, nice dude. So to be able to show you guys these examples, what I did was set up my camera in my apartment. I'm using the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2, and I am using three different lenses here, the Tokina 11-16 EF mount, the Sigma 18-35, Sigma 24-70. I also wanna note that we are using no filtration here. I set the f-stop to 2.8 throughout all of the different lenses to be able to give the most accurate representation. So the goal for me was to keep the f-stop, the framing and size of her within the frame consistent throughout each of the different focal lengths to make sure that each of the comparisons were as consistent as possible. The first lens that we're gonna be showing is the 11 millimeter Tokina at 2.8. And this is the widest lens that I have, and it will create the most unique look out of all of the lenses here today. So a few characteristics of a wide angle lens, you notice that the face becomes quite narrow and pushed back. It's almost like a fish. You start to kind of hide the eyes. The background feels a bit of a distance away. And even close up, you can get a great view of the location in space. This is definitely a very unique look and can be used properly, but could also really ruin the structure of a human face if this wasn't your intention. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the 18 millimeter at 2.8. Now this is still considered a wide angle lens and can still give a similar feeling and characteristic of the 11 millimeter, but obviously way less drastic. You can still get the feeling of location and space while it feels a bit more quote unquote normal. The face is starting to get a bit more flattened and less pushed back, but still not completely natural yet. This is definitely a bit more of an attractive approach. If you are in that wide angle realm, if you aren't a big fan of the 11 because it just doesn't really lend well to the structure of the face that you're shooting, in a 16 millimeter or 18 millimeter can still give you that type of feeling without being that drastic. So here is a comparison between the 11 millimeter and 18 millimeter. Next, we're gonna be shooting at 24 millimeters at 2.8. As we get closer to 35 and 50 millimeter, you will start to notice the face to begin to shape more naturally and flattering. We start to get a bit more accurate representation of what her actual face starts to look like. At 24 millimeter, we can get a good sense of the location in space, but we are starting to feel a bit more compressed and notice the background getting a bit larger and it appears to be getting closer to the subject. As we approach the tighter lenses, that will be an upcoming theme. As you notice that the background starts to compress against the subject, everything starts to become flattened and the background starts to become larger and closer. Now here is a side-by-side -side of the 18 millimeter and 24 millimeter. 
Next, we're going to be moving to 35 millimeter, and this is a fairly good representation of a classic portrait lens. When I'm shooting portraits, I'm usually a very big fan of 24 and 35 millimeter. Even though in certain commercials I have used the 11 millimeter for a bit more of a stylized look, I tend to lean more towards that 24 or 35 millimeter look. So notice here the background is starting to get less visible and more compressed, feeling as if it is getting closer to the subject. It is also noted that her face is far more flattering and natural as the compression starts to flatten her face more to a more normal appearance. Also, a quick note, even though we are at a constant 2.8, you will notice the background getting increasingly blurrier as we get into tighter lenses. At 11mm 2.8, the background is still quite in focus compared to the 35mm here. Here is a side-by-side -side of the 24 and 35mm. Next, we're going to be shooting at 40 millimeter, and the reason why I chose 40, even though it's quite close to 35, is because in a lot of cinema lens sets, 35 isn't really an option. It's usually 32, 40, 50, and a lot of the times I tend to go with 40 millimeter. It is usually a perfect balance for me between a 50 millimeter being slightly too tight and 35 being a little too wide. It's also very dependent on the location and how much room you could actually back up in the space to get the framing. As you can notice, 40mm here is pretty similar to the 35 as you look at the comparison. So next we're going to move to the 50mm, which is a pretty industry standard lens for portraits and close-ups. The background is getting even more compressed and blurry, her face is just about normal looking. One thing to note here is that the tighter of the lens that you choose, you may need more space in the actual location to be able to give you the room to get the exact composition that you want. So take note of that when you are at a location scout or if you have photos of a location and you're choosing lenses, take note of how much room you actually have until you hit a wall. That's gonna be a big determining factor in what lens you choose for a specific shot. Here is a side-by-side -side of the 40 millimeter and 50 millimeter. The last focal length that we're going to be testing is the 70mm lens here. Similar to the 50mm, her face is starting to look a bit more compressed and flattened. Similar to the background, it is even more closer and blurrier. Still, we are seeing even less of the location now. I also want to make a note that the tighter the lens that you're choosing, the flatter the face will be. Directly opposite of the wide angle lens where it almost looked like a fish and it was pushed back and you can't even see your ears anymore. The tighter the lens, the exact opposite will happen. So being able to understand the talent and the actor or actress you have in front of you and their facial structure, being able to choose a lens that could best represent the story and best show off their appearances, that'll be a very big determining factor for you as a cinematographer in how to shoot a particular scene. So that's a wrap for today. Hopefully you guys found this to be a little bit beneficial. You maybe learned a little something that you could take away for future shoots. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all dependent on the production and the story that you're trying to tell. So before I sign off, here are all the shots back to back. So that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it valuable, share it with a friend, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Also, I have a new desk set up. Let me know in the comments below if you want to get a tour of this desk. I also got a new podcast mixer here. I'm really excited to step up my podcast this upcoming year. If you haven't checked it out, check it out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, The Creative Gap. I am really excited to continue having conversations with amazing entrepreneurs, creatives, and artists. So definitely check that out if you are a podcast person. So that's it for today. Hopefully you guys have a great day. I will see you next time. Peace out.